Okay, I was the chair of uh, panel session 16, which was looking at financing disaster risk reduction and community-based adaptation. What were the synergies between those two different uh, areas of work? Okay, the key messages coming from the session was that at the macro and the meso level, the uh, organisational systems in, in place are, are siloed. There is uh, separation between humanitarian, uh, development, conservation, health. But at the grassroots level, those issues are in many ways irrelevant because mm. when a disaster strikes, whether it's a climate-induced disaster or due to underlying threats, the impact on the community is the same and they need to have the ability, the resources, the capacity to be able to respond to those disasters. So the issue of organisational uh, siloing is very pertinent at major scales, but at the grassroots level um, we have to recognise that communities face those issues on a day-to-day -day basis. The second one, I think, is that uh, there is the need to make the uh, substantiate the link between climate change and natural disasters, because a lot of funding is being diverted towards humanitarian assistance, in the in the in the understanding that that is part and parcel of climate change adaptation. And I think we really need to be clear on where climate change is exacerbating disasters and how we can avoid those mistakes, planning mistakes being made in the future. Uh, the third one is uh, a common theme for the whole conference and that is reaching the most vulnerable. There is a real need to ensure that community-based adaptation isn't uh, being captured by, say, elites or by certain sectors of society and that it's reaching the women, it's reaching disabled, it's reaching those who are least powerful and have the lowest voice. Uh, there's the whole issue of climate finance, uh, the issue of the ethics of climate finance and uh, the fact that with climate change, those uh, social dynamics are changing and one big issue is migration. Mm. So we're going to see migrant communities appearing in areas where maybe they could be excluded. So climate change is going to be driving more and more social diversion in the future. Uh, interesting questions. The first one was um, around the issue of community-based adaptation, mm. not as a step in itself, but that it needs to be part and parcel of incremental adaptation. We need to be looking at community-based adaptation, not in isolation, but what it, how to, to ensure that that is contributing to development processes, so that in the future, communities, people are more, uh, more, uh, more, so that people are more effective to respond to the future threats of climate change. Uh, the second key question was really around the issue that urban disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation is becoming more and more important and we need to shift the focus away from just rural communities mm. and look at maybe neighbourhoods, look at sectors, look at key services upon which urban communities depend. And then there were plenty of questions around the issue of reaching the, the most marginalised and uh, Dalits in South Asia, migratory communities in new areas of uh, industry, that, those types of issues. Mm. But plenty of good questions. Um, there weren't any areas of disagreement, mm. but I think there is really a there was a dichotomy in the audience between those who were looking at it from a funding perspective and those who were looking at it from an action perspective. But there were no major disagreements. I think the clearest advocacy us coming from the session is that it's really about people's empowerment. Mm. If we're going to be effective to reach those who need the assistance the most, uh, we've got to overcome fear of local governments in losing control of resources, we've got to overcome the fear of local governments of a failure of those initiatives, and really that's a, that's a fundamental factor of the lack of trust. I think we many of the participants in the in the audience were clear that communities with a minor amount of assistance can manage funds effectively but i think that needs to be mainstreamed you know, this whole issue of people's empowerment needs to change uh, governments need to be more accountable to their local populations not just for the funds that are spent but for those local populations livelihoods and well-being